what's up everyone welcome back to the channel thank you guys for tuning in first things first i want to say uh, thank you guys for all the uh, kind words in the comment section on the uh, last video that was a, a really tough one for me to have to put together for you guys and uh it's been really tough trying to figure out how to uh, move forward with anything in life since danielle's passing uh, at the end of the video i told you guys that i was going to talk about what happened and at the moment, I really haven't figured out how I want to piece that one together for you guys yet. But I don't also don't want you guys to uh, be without any content either. So I've got a, a few videos already lined up for you guys uh, to keep you occupied while I figure out exactly how I want to talk about uh, what happened with Danielle and what exactly that uh, means for the channel moving forward. And uh, at the same time, uh, this video here, I don't have uh, one of my standard uh, endings so uh, again thank you guys for uh, tuning in if you're new around here and uh, you want to join the team hit that subscribe button below uh, like these videos share these videos help this channel grow uh, drop some comments in the comment section and that's it man let's uh let's get to it guys we're gonna be playing around with a uh, Robbie CB7 Robbie's car has been uh, having an issue. So I'm going to be playing around with his G23 today. Um, fires up. It runs. Hell, the car even drives. You can still drive the car. What's going on with it seems to be uh, pretty minor. He was uh, describing to me that he couldn't get the car to a rev pass to, you know, about like 5,000 RPMs or so. So I told him it could be like a number of different things, you know, like fuel pressure issues, but our whole fuel system is new. Could be a distributor cut issue, even though our distributor is new, you know, but I needed to actually drive the car myself to feel exactly what was going on. So last night I went out and took his car for a uh, test run. And like I said, it runs and drives just fine. You can rev the car all the way to its uh, red line when the car is in neutral and not in a load. But upon acceleration, when the car is in gear under load, as soon as it hits 5200 RPMs, it just starts spazzing out. In the exact same way that you would almost think that the distributor uh, was having an ignition cut, you know, problem. But when it's in neutral, I can rev it past 5,000 RPMs, no issues whatsoever. And over and over and over, a few different times, I kept uh, I kept getting the uh, symptom to occur. And the only time that the symptom is actually uh, seems to be occurring is at the exact moment when the ECU is trying to tell the VTEC solenoid to engage VTEC. Yeah, you know, first first thing that I want to do is I want to you know take a look at everything and check. Make sure nothing looks nothing looks bad. All our connectors and the wiring looks okay. Our plugs look good. This one is our pressure switch. This one looks good. One thing I've noticed right off the bat that you can't see here in the camera is we have a very minor bit of oil leakage coming here from the solenoid. Not enough for that to even fathom being any kind of an issue. We'll check the connector here to the actual solenoid itself. This doesn't look bad. There's no corrosion in there. It's a little bit dirty from a little bit of oil. Same thing inside here. I'll grab a Q-tip and I'll go get a little bit of that residue cleaned out of there but I highly doubt that that has anything to do with what's causing our problems all right since everything visually checks out all our connections look okay wiring looks okay we're going to start testing our VTEC solenoid to make sure that this guy isn't faulty and causing our problems before we start digging any further into the car what we're gonna need to do here now at this point is we're gonna run a uh, resistance test on the solenoid what we want to see is uh, 
between 14 ohms and 30 ohms if it's a good unit. If it's any number below that or above that, we're dealing with a bad unit. So we've got our multimeter here, all set up, ready to go. I've got a jumper going from my pin so that I can connect my positive lead of my multimeter here. I've got the uh, ground connected to the body ground of the car. I've got my multimeter set to read up to 200 ohms. We'll get this thing turned on here. And we'll see what she's sitting at. All right, so we've got 14.6, 14.7 ohms. That is within range. We wanted to see between 13 and 30. So the ohms test is telling us that our solenoid is okay. So the solenoid has passed the uh, resistance test. I've now pulled out my power probe for us to do a actual, uh, the actual power check and uh, actually test the functionality of the unit. So I've got my power probe here hooked up. Positive of my power probe has jumped off our uh, starter since our battery is way in the back of the car. The, uh, ground is grounded to the body of the car for our power probe we have a test lead still running from the plug of our solenoid to attach to our power probe it is a single wire unit so the solenoid should be grounded through the body of the car just being bolted up to the head so as soon as i attach this uh, test lead here to our power probe the power probe should light up green letting us know that we have a, a complete circuit and then we will power it up. We'll listen for a click and see if it's spazzing out. So first thing we're going to do, we've got our test lead attached to our power probe. Our light is green. The circuit is complete. Now let's listen for this click. It's working. And when I hold it, it's not spazzing out. So, we're not dealing with a bad solenoid at all with this car. We either A, have a, a problem between the wiring of the VTAC solenoid and the ECU somewhere in the harness or um, maybe the ECU itself you know has gone bad and uh, one way I think that we can test that is to go ahead and leave this unplugged get the uh, car warmed up and we'll take it for another test drive and see if uh, it stops spazzing out at 5,000 rpms right when our VTAC is trying to engage if it goes away, we know we need to bypass it and test the uh, ECU and go further from there. But if it keeps wigging out, then yeah, we still need to dig further. All right, guys, so I got the car fired up and it's already acting completely different. You know, it's no longer wanting to be a running driving car. I've got a check engine light there instantaneously on the dash. When I try to give it gas, it's just wanting to bog out and die like it's trying to cut it. Well, now that I have it on camera, of course, it's uh, gonna. No, nope, there it goes. Yeah, she ain't wanting to. Uh, she ain't wanting to uh, do what she's supposed to do. So let's find out what this check engine light is trying to tell us. I don't even know if it really is a VTEC issue that we're having with this car or not. It seems to be a. Uh, something even further. All right, so we're tripping a code 21 for the VTEC solenoid, which we should be because we have the solenoid disconnected, you know, from the unit. However, though, we're not getting any other codes, 
so that absolutely does nothing to uh, help us figure out why all of a sudden Robbie's car no longer wants to uh, run right and no longer wants to drive at all. When last night I took it to the store, it was running and driving just fine. The only time it had a problem was at the exact moment that VTEC was trying to engage, which is why we started investigating the uh, VTEC system. And now that I'm trying to show you guys, you know, the process of figuring out VTEC problems, of course, the car uh, developed some other kind of issue that has absolutely probably nothing to do with the VTEC. So I gotta let Robbie know the uh, bad news of what's going on with the car. And we probably got, just like with the wagon, I would assume probably an engine harness gremlin of some kind. So we're gonna get the uh, harness yanked out of this car. And uh, Robbie's gonna have to open up the harness and see if anything got screwed up and get it all back together and see what happens at that point. Another distributor, still the same issue. Robbie there thinks that it's the ECU. I think there's a problem in the harness for some reason. What do you guys think? I've convinced Robbie over here to just go ahead and yank this harness out, I guess. I'm yanking it. And uh, <laughs> we'll find out, you know, once he gets his harness out and we open it up.